Hey guys, so, um, I believe a month or two ago I made a video about the Casio LXM EXS200, but I didn't really do too much with it. So today I decided to show you what this camera is really about and we're going to actually review it today. So, yeah, I'm just going to get straight into this one. Ooh. I'm also going to compare it to my phone, which is actually what I'm recording this video on. This is the same phone, it's just, this one's my phone, and the one that this is being recorded on is my brother's. So let's compare. So this is a 14 megapixel, super, super small camera. Um, it's got a record button, a dedicated button, you don't see that too often, but that is quite nice. Sorry about the autofocus. I'll be getting a camera by December. But we've got shooting mode. And I'm going to talk about that. Whoa. And I'm going to talk about um, this more, but it's just one of these. You guys kind of know. Wayback button and auto. So we're going to get on to all of these um, in a second. We got shutter button, zoom, flash, it has a 27 millimeter um, lens. It actually is pretty wide, so I am pretty surprised about that. So let's turn this on. So to talk about it, dang it, tripod. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, you can't really tell through the camera, but the colors look a lot nicer. I'm a lot more yellow through this. This camera has a 6x zoom, and this camera only has a 4x zoom. So, that is kind of disappointing for a phone camera. This thing came out in 2010. Um, it is really small. This little, this whole compartment area, it's all... The whole lens sensor, everything really small, almost a macro cam uh, micro camera. Feels like I'm using a GoPro, um, but the quality on this is actually really nice for an $80 camera. Probably, um, probably one of the best cameras I've ever seen, um, especially because this thing is from 2010. And it has, apparently it has YouTube capture mode. That means nothing. So we're not going to talk about that. Here's the zoom. Here's the zoom in action. So you can see. Okay, there. He's, a, he's quite in focus. If I look through this camera. But this camera has terrible focus when you bring stuff up to it. So we're just going to zoom in onto the cat and once you zoom in it zooms in pretty far for um six times zoom um but it also gets really really crummy so um yeah that's kind of weird this thing is pretty quick and easy to use it's actually like really quick and easy Pull it right out, shutter button, turns it on, and just go boom, boom, really fast. Um, I keep a four gigabyte sand disk in it because I don't record video on it and it's more than enough for just some pictures. I'll just take this one, throw it in my laptop. Take the pictures off it and then wipe it and put it back in. Now, the autofocus on this is actually pretty quick. Whoa. But it has problems um, with just stuff really close. Damn it. I did not properly set up the tripod. So that's why it keeps falling. Um, it... I believe this camera shoots 1080p, 
I do. I think this one only shoots. Actually, this one should shoot 1080p, but it might only be 720. Um, it has this really thin battery. Let's pop it right on out. It's this right here. It is um, Casio's MP120. Really short battery, but I mean, it's a it's a small and lightweight one, which you don't see that often. So yeah, that's kind of cool. But the thing about this being really wonky with zoom is this is also very wonky with zoom. So I'm just going to zoom in. I don't know if you can see, but it gets really noisy. And it doesn't zoom in very far. Um, I do not know exact measurements on this. Here's a tripod I can't properly set. But, um, if you are looking, um, at really cheap cameras that you just want to take on your vacation, I can only find this for 20 bucks, um, on eBay. So, if you're looking for it, I mean, go ahead, it's the Casio Luxon EXS200. Um, it can shoot some pretty good pictures. Um, but you will also run into some problems as it is an older camera. Um, as far as, um, the other things go, there isn't, like, anything super special with this camera. So I'm going to actually go into the dark and we're just going to test out the flash on this thing. So I can't switch flash when I'm just recording video on this camera but let's go over I don't know if you can see but this looks pretty good yeah, you guys definitely can't see it but the quality is pretty similar the camera has a bit more yellowing in it but it's actually pretty good alright so I'm in a darker spot now I'm gonna say this camera is really noisy but Here's this camera, not very much noise, and it, the yellowing really helps it look pretty good, even when it's like this. So, um, this button right here, um, the center button on this whole little thing, this right here, um, has all the settings on it, whoa, all the settings on it, we've got autofocus, um, and here's the lights. Let me turn the flash on real quick. And we're going to take a photo. And that was a red flash. So, I'm um, just now reviewing it. And it honestly isn't that bad. Now, this camera has a big problem with actual audio, it sounds terrible. But, um, as my channel was formerly named Michael the Editor, I kind of know how to edit. And I can easily clean up the audio, so it seems like I spent... If you were to watch my video, and you were in, you knew a lot of stuff about cameras, you'd probably think I spent, mm, about 400 bucks on this camera. That's how much you would say. You would think I bought some random compact camera... With a fixed screen. Because if, I mean, if I were to buy a camera, it would definitely have a flip out or fully articulating. This one, fixed. Yeah, you'd only say maybe 400 bucks. Maybe the price of a Canon T7, not the T7i. And that's really good. This thing is 2010, and it's comparing up to a modern camera. But just kidding, that... That camera that I just compared it to from that price point is, like, insane. It's really good for that price point. I have... I'm probably going to do a full review on it. So now let's... Let's carry a side-by-side. -side. So I don't really have anything to rig these. Because, I mean, right now when I record my videos... I've got this handy-dandy tripod mount for my phone 
and it's really loosely set so it pops right off the tripod and right onto it and it's really nice for holding but this camera which usually comes with a wrist strap I lost mine or I don't know what actually happened to it but I mean it's here um, no wrist strap the gripping is kind of weird with it. it it feels tight in your hands but you have to hold it right for it to feel tight and for whatever reason I can't hold it right and I guess that's probably because I'm left-handed and well almost all cameras are for righties but this camera it's pretty nice anyways let's let's try and compare them side by side so I'm gonna go set that up real quick all right so I got the camera on the tripod my phone and I've just got this tripod thingamabobbery on it like I always do so I'm gonna put them down um, and we're gonna compare side by side shots all right so this camera which has the fastest boot up I've seen and cameras besides mobile phone cameras so the displays are obviously a lot different well because this is a camera with a 2.7 inch and this is a phone with a full I believe around I believe it's a six six and a half inch screen and so compared side by side You'll think, well, this one doesn't look like it's focusing, but because of a smaller screen, the phone that I'm recording on actually can't focus on this. So that's trying. That's just kind of explaining that. Now the thing is, they both have a lot. Of, they both have a lot of noise, but I think my phone camera is doing better. Now also, you can see these looks like lines coming through my phone. Um, now that's not happening. Um, that's not actually happening, but apparently that's something that this can't, that the phone that I'm recording on likes to show. Um, um, but honestly, I have to give the edge to this camera. If I go into the dark, this yellow is insanely nice. This camera, no night mode. We've just got photo, video. Pro and Panorama, and I do not get Panorama. Like, I would much, much, much rather have Night Mode than Panorama. Now, let's go through the settings on this. And this is this is more of a test than a review. Well, honestly, I don't even know. We're going to... So, in the options, we've got Aspect Ratio... Um, focus, come on, okay, we've got movie quality, HD, or STD, we've got red eye reduction, soft flash, flash on, flash off, and auto flash, I like to keep on auto flash, here's our auto focus, we've got tracking, multi, spot, and intelligent, we've got a timer, um, here's just an actual, there's an actual menu, we've got best shot, um, which I don't know much about, um, I obviously haven't done much research with this kind of stuff, but you basically just select what you, what you're looking like you're going to take a photo of, like you're taking a portrait of scenery, self-portrait one person, self-portrait two people, you know, parties, sports, children, that's a, it's a, Awkward setting. Now I'm just gonna stay in this. Oh, dang it. I just turned it off. I really see my brain showing. Okay. So I think best shot is actually a pretty cool feature. And I think we, sh I wish we could see it more in cameras. But, you know, still pretty cool. And then here's actual menu, um, which has all your basic stuff. It really simplifies like a DSLR's menu. Um, 
As you can see, there isn't really much special in this. Um, and then we've got Claudia over here, and I don't know if it's going to let me go over to that. Um, not a touch screen, but, you know, I don't see, don't see that as a big problem. Okay, now we're going to go across. Okay, quality. Got all your normal stuff. There's two rows to that, and then we've got recording. And it's got a lot of stuff, so, honestly, I like the menu on it. Really, really easy to handle. Um, and then this audio, this auto button. Basically, it has two options. You've got premium auto, and then just auto. Premium auto just usually means bigger files, but it tries to be smarter about what it's doing. Oh, this on the other hand, it's really just got coloring. It's got some exposure options, but there's just not much. And honestly, I would take this camera over this camera. But I did run into a problem with it. I had spent a long time filming a great old video. And then I took out the SD, threw it into my laptop. And um, um, all the clips were blank. And I think it was a problem with the SD card or my laptop reader. SD card reader. Now that I think about it, definitely was just the SD card. But, yeah, you got to make sure you don't have any... Make sure you're not running on a bad SD card. And try not to damage it when you're trying to slide it through this thing. So yeah, that is the test and review um, of my Casio Alexum EX S200. And I think you should buy it. Um, and if you guys are wondering what camera I would actually recommend if you have a bit more budget. For 400 bucks, you can get the Panasonic Lumix DMC FC300. It's a bridge-like DSLR. It has a flip screen, fully articulating. Um, it has a headphone jack, or a microphone jack, sorry. A 25 to 600 millimeter lens, and a bunch of other cool stuff. Look it up on YouTube. You will be amazed. Um, but yeah, that's it for this video. I love you guys. Subscribe to my main channel, Onion Toad. Um, all links in the description. And, yeah. Bye.